So you had 16 point move on the Qs in six sessions. That's a lot. The last thing you want to see is something called too much too fast or too far too fast. And that's kind of what we're starting to get. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Hope everybody had a great uh, week of trading. If you trade uh, technology, if you trade uh, the high beta uh, mega cap technology names, and obviously this was a week that was really pretty damn good. I mean, that's the best way you can say it. Um, I, for all you guys who are joining us here uh, for the first time on this broadcast, it's kind of rewind the last uh, you know last week or so, and you can kind of figure out uh, where the sweet spots truly are in the market when you when you have a technical mindset instead of having an opinion. So, uh, very very quick review. Finally, the Qs uh, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. Uh, that's that was kind of the the theme this week, and we'll, we'll illustrate what we're talking about for all you guys who are watching the broadcast. You kind of been following along, um, but the Qs finally reclaimed uh, the 50-day moving average here at 321, which is super important because look how many times it's gotten rejected off the 50-day moving average just off the last several months. Especially, we were so heavily sell biased uh, for the month of February into March, which played out really, really well. But there's a time to be sell bias when everything is under supply or actually underneath demand. Uh, and there's the time to be really, really aggressively bull bias once everything reclaims supply and starts going forward. So not only did the queues uh, finally reclaim the 321 level, they reclaimed this whole area here that's been rejected for a month and change uh, at 324 and started a pretty aggressive uh, bias, right? Really aggressive buy bias, and and this was and that was the video. If you guys remember, right around here, the first close uh, over this three twenty four level, and that was the you know the video. I came out and said, look, there's no room for interpretation here. Okay, this is bullish. This is uh, you don't want to be short the market. This they reclaim levels that have been in a distribution channel for two months, and that was the key, right? Once they reclaimed all these macro levels, it started pulling everything up. One by one by one, and if you look at the if you look at the scoreboard this week, really aggressive, right? You had the Qs up three percent, same pretty much uh, plus or minus on the on the on the S and P and and the Dow as well. It really does show you uh, how important technical analysis is because if you've been following the tech sector, pretty much the last for the for, for, uh, take last week out of the way. If you've been following the tech sector for the last pretty much three four months, they've been you know they've been range bound very, very aggressively. But I say this all the time, the longer the distribution, if you watched any of uh, the PS60 workshops, you'll hear me say this over and over again, the longer the distribution, meaning the longer a stock is in a channel, once it finally comes out of the channel, the harder the probability of the move comes. And you saw that this week, name after name after name. And if you look at the common denominator, right? Here are the Qs reclaiming the 50-day moving average, going on a mega move. Now look at the stocks, right? We, we highlighted these names. We had some monster moves this week, which was phenomenal. You know, this is kind of the week we've been waiting for for a very long time in technology. And if you look at the names that triggered one by one by one, if you've been kind of following along this broadcast, hell, just in the last week, you saw a complete mirror image of the Qs, right? You saw NVIDIA. Uh, this was a really big trade. Um, NVIDIA was a monster, right? Reclaimed uh, this 530 level and just absolutely exploded, right? You had a 50 point move. Um, you had a 50 point move. I'm sorry, you had a 30 point move. Math, math 101. You had a 30 point move in NVIDIA really, really aggressively. Uh, Amazon, we talked about Amazon and nausea. Uh, what was going to happen if it started reclaiming the 50-day moving average? And you can see here, right? Once it reclaimed the 3182 level, just absolutely went nuts. It's almost at 3400. Uh, Apple was uh, the last video I recorded on Wednesday nights because Thursday um, I, I kind of take a, a mental res day. I don't do a video. I kind of just kind of re recharge for the Friday for Friday session. And this is the last video I made on Wednesday, right? Talking about, you know, Apple's next. You know, if Apple reclaims this whole channel, it should put up a run. And it did exactly the same thing. And the coolest part about this rally is it hasn't been 
everything's going at once, right? Uh, Apple for sure, right? NVIDIA for sure, Amazon for sure. Facebook has been strong for a little bit of time, uh, really rest this week. But again, can anybody really, you know, really you know, be mad at Facebook? Facebook went first. When you look at names uh, like Microsoft, the name that uh, we highlighted twice in the last few days, again, it did exactly the same thing, reclaimed this linear regression line and went on a move. But the coolest part, again, is, excuse me for repeating myself, but the, the coolest part uh, about what we saw this week was not everything confirmed yet. Like Roku had a really big move, right? Like think about it. Look, look at the move on Roku just from the bottom. It went from 396 all the way to 373. But if you look at where it is right now versus the other names that we just talked about, it's still underneath the 50-day moving average. Now, it's not close yet to reclaiming the 50-day moving average, but that's kind of my point. This was a rally this week that if you did your chart work, and I, and I always emphasize this, especially – uh, to the newer traders. Again, even if you don't know what you're looking for, do charts, you know, constantly, 30, 40 minutes a day, an hour, you know, two hours on the weekend. Get your mind focused, get your mind um, ready to kind of start repeating the same patterns over and over again, and the same scenarios over and over again, and eventually it clicks, right? Eventually it all clicks. So I, I really encourage everybody to doing, to doing the chart work. But if you look at a lot of names this week, right? They're still not out of the woods. And this is what made uh, this rally very, very cool and very specific because you didn't need to look at 500 names, right? You didn't need to uh, look at names that didn't confirm. So for example, uh, Peloton, right, is still underneath the 50-day moving average. Roku is still underneath the 50-day moving average. And if you do your homework, you'll see a lot of names that are still underneath the 50-day moving average despite the strength of the market. Now, if we continue, and there's a, there's a little bit of an if, and we'll sh well, I'll share that in a second. If we do continue, right, maybe these stocks finally wake up this week. You know, maybe, maybe not. You know, Roku's going to need to do some work uh, to really wake up. Pe uh, Peloton's going to need some work to really wake up. But if you do your homework, you will see there's a lot of good value names that are still out there that you can you can take advantage of, and when they confirm the 50-day moving average, they could spike up. Here's the curveball, right? Here's the curveball of the week. I do believe we we have at least I, I believe we have another day or so of upside. And the reason why I say that, number one, you can make a case, and this is a six point, this is a six-day move from 321 on the Qs almost to, well, to 337. So you had 16-point move on the Qs in six sessions. That's a lot. The last thing you want to see is something called too much too fast or too far too fast. And that's kind of where we're, we're starting to get. But I do believe we have one more push in the queues. And if we do get a gap up on Monday into this 38, 78, 39 level, consider making some sales. If you've been swinging uh, the Amazons and the Nvidia and, and, and the Apples of the world, uh, just in the last week or so, consider making some sales because usually what's going to happen is it's going to hit supply, right? Hit supply and roll over. In a perfect world, we have a flat open on Monday or we have kind of a slightly red um, open on Monday just because we could buy stocks into rising support, right? Buy stocks into rising support. And if there is a rally, that last gasp of Euphoria, and again, I'm not calling the top. This is kind of literally day to day taking advantage of 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 uh, of, uh, of data. If we can get that push, that really aggressive push, uh, somewhere into the 339 and level, that's pretty an area that you want to lighten up or even take off your swings. Because what's going to happen nine out of ten times, it's going to hit this 339 level and probably have one or two days of back test. So look what happened here, right? Everybody see the last time it hit this linear regression line, right? What happened the next day? The next day we went lower. Everybody see that? So, you know, if things usually repeat themselves over and over again. If you see here, right, if you see here, it hit this linear regression line, look what happened the next couple of days, it rolled over. So we're very close, okay? Uh, again, I'm not calling for the market to go down. Just be careful. Just, just recognize the levels. And if you are in names that are very, very extended, those names are sells into that push. They're not buys. So if you have a, uh, a if you have Amazon, for example, right, and if the queues start going into the three thirty nine levels, hell, maybe pair some off. You know, maybe keep a runner, whatever the case may be. But you know, definitely give them stock, man. Definitely give them stock on the way up. 
Amazon's not a buy up here, it's a sell, right? The buy was right over here. Think, think about this. There's only one breakout in the chart. The breakout was 3182, that's where I got long. Uh, and the next day, excuse me, in the, in the next you know, few minutes, the stock absolutely went parabolic. And four or five days later, it's even crazy, even higher above that. But the buy on Amazon was 3182. Everything else here, right? Or everything else here, from here, 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 here. This is all one big cons uh, consult, excuse me, continuation channel. So this isn't a breakout. This is all continuation. And the difference between a breakout, right? The difference between a breakout and um, uh, continuation is the highest probability is always going to come on the breakout. And then slowly but surely, as the stock goes higher and higher and higher, your chances of high probability continuation start slowly but surely decreasing. And if the stock, for example, like an Amazon, is six, seven days above the pivot, Right? There's a higher probability than not you're going to have a back test, especially if we turn around uh, and hit like the 139 on the Qs. In a perfect world, what I think is going to happen this week, if we hit that 139 level, we're going to back test, maybe just bait, call it a rest. I don't want to even say back test. Call it a rest for a day or so. Maybe some of the other names will start getting pulled up. And this is why it's so vital uh, to do your research this weekend. But names like Amazon, Apple, and NVIDIA, those are the names once we go into the queues. Those are your one names you want to make some sales and buy them back into the rising five-day support several days later. And, and finally, once we confirm maybe two, three, four days later, that 239 level, that's when we're going to go back to uh, all-time highs here. And you can see it where literally a stone throws away from that as well. So it's very, very important to understand one thing, guys, and in, in going into this week, anything that broke out shouldn't be on your watch list, right? If you're in it and you're managing the position, that's wonderful, right? Apple broke out at 127.22, okay? It's at 132, okay? So the idea of the, the stock is going to behave the same way here as it does the same way here or here or here you're delusional, right? It's a completely different stock. It's a completely different trade at a different interval. So anything you buy this week that's overextended, that broke out five, six, seven dollars ago, those are the ones that have the highest probability of kind of you know dying on a vine, or maybe you know putting yourself in a situation that you're wrong at your entry. It's the same stock. It acts great, but it acts great for six days. Not acts great when you buy it six, seven days. Uh, away from the pivot. The names that I still like, like I really, really like, I love Shop. I think Shop looks great. But keep this in mind, Shop broke out right here, okay? And, and a lot of you guys are holding the runner, uh, or still having to hold your, your whole position, especially you guys in the webinar. The breakout for this thing was 3182, 3190, okay? It's not at 1225. This is all, this is literally all continuation, but at least it's only two days above supply. So if this thing starts confirming last week's price action, so it's confirming this candle, why can't shop put up another 50, 60 points? So this is still viable, but for all you guys who are watching this broadcast right now, it's not viable into the 1240s. Why would you want to be long in 1240 if the breakout was 1182, 1190? And that's my point. There's a lot of names that are still underneath supply that you can find a lot of value. But make sure, right? Make sure it's not six, seven, eight, nine, 12 days away from the pivot or away from the quote unquote breakout to make sure that you have a really high probability that it's going to continue in your direction. So be very wary, carry. So I'm definitely uh, still very, very uh, bull biased uh, going into this week. A little bit of caution. I'm still watching that 139 level on the queues to make sure they don't get rejected. But I'm still very, very bullish. And I do believe even if the queues do get rejected, there's not going to be any fear. There's not going to be any uh, any names that you can be panic selling, like algorithms going to be crushing the bids and bids are going to scatter like cockroaches. It's going to be very orderly. And if everything goes well, you're probably not even going to realize that the queues are even going lower if they test uh, that upper channel. And I think what's going to happen, uh, everything was slowly but surely is going to start getting pulled up. So if you are uh, doing your homework this week and you start looking at a bunch of names that are close to uh, their supply zones, you are going to find a lot of value that's still out there. But make sure, again, they're not overextended. Make sure they're cleaning out sellers at the top of supply and make sure that your entry is technically based not because you're chasing price action, what happened last week. Last week's over, right? Last week's over. Uh, win, lose, or draw, whatever you did this week, last week, win, lose, or draw, it's over. 
concentrate on the now and concentrate on the technical levels above. So for example, and I'm not gonna give you some of the some of the last remaining names that I really, really like, because again, I, I, I've really realized this uh, in the last like 24 hours. Like the names that I really watch, if it's not like a Tesla, there's so much liquidity on Tesla, but there's names that I like. And I realized, you know, once I record a video, uh, especially like on the weekends, and I give you guys, uh, you know, some of these plays, the, the liquidity, my liquidity is gone, man. It, like I saw it a couple of, you know, I saw it a couple of days ago. I was watching the stock that I highlighted on the previous night's video. And, you know, because the broadcast goes out, you know, I looked, I turned around, my liquidity was gone at that price. It was gone. I couldn't even take advantage of the trade. So I'm kind of going to hold off. Obviously, everybody in the webinar obviously knows these prices on the, on the Twitter feed, but I'm kind of going to, going forward, uh, I'm going to hold off kind of giving these really premium beta names just because the liquidity is important to me. Uh, so if I can't get into the trade, there's no reason for me to put that out. Um, so I kind of like to trade some of these names. But let me give you some names um, that I'm kind of watching to the downside of all things. Um, look at GameStop, right? Look at GameStop. Uh, we had a pretty decent pivot on GameStop on Friday uh, below this 162 level. Keep an eye on this thing. If this thing starts losing Friday's lows, it has room to the 50 day. It hasn't demonstrated any reason to kind of every, like any type of good news uh, came up. It kind of got sold. Uh, so keep an eye on this thing. I think this thing has room to like 145, but the key is if it closes below 145, look how much room you have to the downside. Uh, also this Baidu doesn't act well at all. Again, this whole uh, Chinese unwinding of securities off that uh, prop shop, had whatever they whatever they were. Um, you know, Baidu hasn't rallied either. Got rejected off these top levels. Obviously, we know this top of the range here. But if it starts losing the ten day moving average, there's a lot a lot of room to the downside as well. So you definitely want to keep an eye on those uh, as well. So I think we're set up for this week, guys. Um, there's a lot of good value. I wish everybody the best of luck. Remember, do not buy overextended moves because the first stocks, the first group of names that get pulled, if the futures get rejected, especially if the QQQs hit that uh, 138, 139 level, there are going to be the names that have the big, big runs. So you might not want to maybe buy Amazon up 150 points uh, off its pivot, maybe not buy Apple six, you know, six points off its pivot. Look for other names nice and calmly. Remember, you don't need to trade every single day, one day at a time, one trade at a time. Guys, God bless. I wish you the best and God's help. I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.